All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Ascarate. Uh, today, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to the use of swing arms. I will also try to attempt to give you a walkthrough of the approach that I take uh, when I start, when I first get to my computer to the get my bearings on what the market's doing and get a sense of what uh, the system is giving me as potential setups for the trading sessions I'm looking to trade. Uh, the swing arms is, is an idea that developed over time. I, I originally started with a system called Black Flag and the Black Flag was just a set of alerts that tries to read the waves in the market, which is exactly what the swing arms end up doing. Uh, as the years passed and the studying continued, I started to put two and two together and then come up with the system that I call swing arms today. Before we get started, I uh, just want to make sure that uh, we go over the risk of loss, risk of loss warning. Uh, you may trade multiple times successfully, but without enough trading experience, uh, dealing with how you mentally respond to changing markets and day and uh, life issues, uh, they may cost you to cost you to make irrational, costly decisions. This day. when you don't have the enough experience, you haven't put in the time to understand how price behaves, how price responds to. Uh, input from the market. It could be news, it could be resistance, it could be trend, it could be whatever it is. But um, when you start to right away run and um, start placing trades and on top of that you add volume to your positions without really understanding what you're doing and how to protect your capital, you expose yourself to significant risk. Uh, so I just want to make sure that on every discussion that we have, you realize that this is uh, not a game. This is a serious, serious business where you can make some serious, serious money. But you can also blow it up. Just as easy as you thought it would come in, it's just as easy it goes out. So take your time, paper trade, and paper trade, and paper trade. The experience that the individuals in this group have is not something that can be transferred you must put in the time. You put in the effort to study charts, to study what's being given to you, to study the action plan that uh, will be shared with you. But then the homework is on your side. Uh, you must learn to read momentum, volume, support, resistance, all these different things, uh, which of course, with the tools that we currently have uh, from the various members of this group, dramatically impact your chances of success. So, Keep that in mind. Going forward, what was the thought that I had in my mind back in 2015 after I had experienced initial losses from prior, uh, trying to follow various types of coaches that I hired, hired over the years and uh, not knowing really where to go from there. I just had in my mind that uh, what I needed was something that was visually appealing to me that's what, uh, I guess you, you've found out by now that I love color and I love design and I love the way things look and feel. Uh, so in my mind, I was visualizing to have a system that pretty much worked, worked like stoplight, red light, green light type of thing. And something that was not lagging in time. I wanted to be forward looking into what price action would be doing. I, and I wanted to know ahead of time, days, weeks, or months in advance, where potentially price would go. I had no clue and no idea where that was coming from. Uh, I had experienced the Elliott Wave process. I lost my ass with that, trying to figure that crap out. I was not that smart to figure it out. But I had to come up with an alternative. And over the years of the thousands and thousands of work of study, I little by little ended up getting closer and closer to what you see today. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find you guys about a week and a half ago. And I guess in a week and a half of time, we have done an amazing thing to 
to uh, get all together and, and, and don't even know each other, but we're sharing stuff left and right. And we're all willing to help each other, you know, at crazy hours of the night, I'm, I'm getting calls at, you know, or we're communi I'm communicating with people all over the place at, at, at just about at any time of day, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, uh, because everybody's so pumped up with ideas of things to do and, and things to accomplish as a group. So it's a, it's a fascinating process. So as I started this uh, journey of developing this alert system that would allow us to, to see ahead of time uh, a, move, a market move, I had a set of goals that I wanted to, to reach. And uh, I will not go through every one of them. You can read them on the screen. But it was extremely important for me to be able to accomplish those goals because without them, I would be back again to what caused me to make so many mistakes and so many poor decisions because I really didn't know what I was doing. I did not know how price really moved and I kept following coaches, go this, go there, buy there, here, buy there. And I was completely lost. I was chasing them back and forth and uh, losing constantly. Sometimes, yes, there was some money made, but the losses were 10 times more. Uh, well, maybe not 10 times more, significantly more. Uh, and the, the guidance that I was getting from them was so limited and so poor, knowing that I had no knowledge. To, I mean, when compared to them, I had no knowledge. That's the reality of it. So the, the, as the losses accumulated after I had depleted everything I had, I practically had to stop, stop uh, uh, trading for like about a year and a half or so, probably maybe even more than that, to regroup because the, 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 the effect on, on your mind is so detrimental that practically paralyzes you from taking another step forward. So I had to pretty much reformat my, my hard drive, my mind, to be able to start all over again and still go back and start stumbling here and there and you know one step forward or two forward one back a constant process so the stress and the fear and the FOMO and all these different things never went away uh, but I still kept going forward so the goals were clear and uh, they, they, they never stopped me from from continuing the process but uh, once now that we're here we get to this one point, is there, is there really a magic pill in a way, a holy grail for trading that's gonna do everything for me? Uh, not, not really, it can get you there. Uh, it can get you to a point where the probability of success in your trade is significant. The competitive edge provided by the swing arm together with training that you must have and a balanced mind, state of mind, provide you a huge, huge risk reward uh, potential. So it is up to you to be able to implement a process that we will guide you through, we will give it to you, but you must do the homework to get through there. So what exactly is the process? Well, number one, we start with the trading edge. Uh, most traders, that are not as lucky as you guys are, that are right here, right now, are trying to figure out what the trading edge is for them. Right now, we're giving it to you. Uh, as a group, everybody has input of extreme value based on their experiences and knowledge to pinpoint in one direction uh, so that we are able to put to work the capital that we have and potentially duplicate it or and grow it exponentially from there. So it, identify your trading edge, you already have it. Enter the trade and place a stop. That will be built into the process. Profit targets just as well, and then execute. The execute part is not system-based. It's based on you, the individual, that makes a choice on buying or on selling. It's up to you to make the decision to pull the trigger. To move forward. So in order for you to execute, we need to, you need to have a neutral, balanced mind, no emotion, no fear, 
no stress, none of those things that affect your ability to make a rational decision. So your, your focus as you start going forward, a portion of your time must be invested in understanding yourself, understanding your mind and what makes you tick, understanding your passions. If you don't have any passions, you need to find them. Every one of those components will help you in the hurdles you're going to experience as you learn, okay? Now, the next lesson is the outcomes to the trade. This came from my mentor, uh, one of my mentors, uh, Burak Kaplan from Trading Channels UK. And uh, he just told me pretty much, Jose, what you need to do is to eliminate the big loss. He just did not tell me how. Just figure it out. That's up to you. You want to win big, you want to win small, you want to lose small, but you want to certainly eliminate the big loss. And, and I'm, you know, fresh at this as I well, should have, I guess I'll have to somehow figure out what, what he means by that and how I structure it. And, and that's pretty much, he just points in one direction and you are to go find out what to do. So in this case, I do not want to do that. And many here in the group support the, the idea of giving you a clear path, like giving you a GPS to the success of trading futures or stock or options. Uh, I personally only trade futures and uh, with the help of some of the individuals here, I will quite likely tag along on some of the uh, options trading as I learn to implement the swing arm with the options as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll need hand holding on that. Now, after reading Marty Schwartz, uh, the book or the PDF that's available on the web, you find you can buy the book or you can buy, you can get the PDF online that's available. That uh, document, he talked about staying neutral constantly focusing on protecting your capital, your working capital. So, and uh, to be fearless in getting out of positions that you thought were incorrectly entered, or if the market did something you did not expect based on your analysis, close the trade. And if you have to do that two, three times in a day, you need to call it a day and walk away because you're not thinking straight. So, so that was a pretty powerful uh, lesson for me because prior to that lesson, I was letting the big losses happen by following other advice or, or guidance with no uh, uh, instruction as to what exactly was, uh, to, uh, was I to eliminate. So, so, so the, the clarity that started to come to mind about staying neutral and practically you either make some money, make a lot of money, or you stay neutral. So you are, you become aggressive at controlling your, uh, your capital. And so that was a component of this process from the beginning. I just didn't know how to do it. But now I, I have the clarity to implement that exact process. Okay. So the, the swing arms themselves uh, provided exactly that clarity. When you start to look at, uh, sorry, I'm getting a text here. Uh, when I started to look at the, the, the goals, Ave Maria, sorry, let me shut this thing off. Uh, when I started to look at the concept of, of the swing arms and how it fulfilled the goals that I had, it made all the difference in the world to me to uh, allow me to get the calm and the peace that I needed to be able to trade. Because the fear and the stress comes from that lack of conviction on your trading style and the doubt of what exactly are you looking at? Am I trading this trend line or, or what is it that's going to really tell me that this thing is going to move in one direction or the other? And if it does move, how do I protect myself? Where do I put my stop? And I'm, I was always guessing and guessing. I said, okay, I guess I'll give myself, I don't know, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars. I have no idea. I was just guessing. I went, let me see if that, maybe that support level over there would work. And um, 
that was a, a, a regardless of the fact that I started to get clarity, I was still lost until I figured out how to put together a twin arm. Uh, then I started to have specific parameters to enter a trade, scale into a trade, and also get out of that trade. So that changed my whole being uh, as it came to the process of buying and selling. Now, continuing with the thought of having the clarity of just green for buying and sell for selling, uh, the swing arms themselves provided me the alert of the trend changing to a bullish direction. Then a buy confirmation trigger also provided me support that uh, the system was uh, turning and getting ready to move. Uh, and then the same thing on the on the selling side, a bearish swing arm breaking down, providing me the guidance that I needed to to then change my mind and in, in the direction that the market is going. Now, the, the, the beauty of this is, is that it did not depend on me analyzing anything. Just read the chart and if the swing arm goes green, you buy, if it goes red, you sell, okay? That's the, the, the simple process of this. We can make it over complicated and we can add this, that and the other, and then it just becomes eventually something you don't understand. But if you go back to the simple, basic component of the trading strategy is, is the swing arm, is a freshly broken bullish swing arm, you buy. If it is a freshly broken bearish swing arm, you sell. That simple. So now, how do I see this visually? Uh, on the left side, I have the sell resistance component. In this case, the swing arm is breaking down. The minute the swing arm breaks down, I get a label that says sell resistance. I also get a text and an email notification telling me, hey, the swing arm is broken, sell resistance. Uh, if I'm in front of the computer at that time, I can take the trade as price comes into what I call the, the sell bucket. I don't know. Do you see my mouse when I move my mouse? Anybody there? Ben? Here, anybody? Yes, we can see your mouth. You can see me now or you've been seeing me? No, we've been seeing that. Okay. <laughs> I said, oh God, don't tell me I'm not paying attention to Discord. I, I've probably been talking here by myself. No, um, you can see the chat on Zoom. That's, that's where we type. Yeah, I'm just focusing on my screen. And not no, you're good because I made you host, so I muted myself, so I wasn't able to talk to you. But you should be fine. Okay, awesome, awesome. Just uh, I, I'm, I have opened the Discord on one side. I don't have the chat on the uh, for the system, but I guess I should later. Anyway, going back to to the visual representation of the market changing direction. So we go from a bullish swing arm. We see a prior on the on the left side all the, 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 the actual zones of the swing arm are green, then we have the flag and it just breaks down. If, if I'm in front of the computer and I can short the bounce, this, this green candle, as it comes back into the bucket, I can sh short that, but this happened so quickly that price really did not backtest the zones. This happens usually at market open. It could be European market open or US, that there is more volume and speed and momentum to price at those times. So in this case, there was no backtest. The backtesting occurred later on in time. Once price reached the daily support zone, it started to go back against the swing arm and then giving opportunities to potential start to scale into the downside. When we look at the bullish side, in this example, price took more time to develop support within the what I call the bucket. Uh, it, on the left side, we see that price was bearish, price action was very bearish until it found support at the daily support zone, bouncing back up, breaking the swing arm. And what that does, once it breaks the swing arm, it creates a bucket. I call it a bucket because it's a hole where price actually comes back into. My coaches always told me, allow price to come to you. 
I had no idea what they meant until I saw this. Uh, and then I, I said, well, I need to figure out a way in which I can see visually price coming to me in a, in a bullish or in a bearish environment. Because before I would see price coming, but I was thinking this thing is going to continue lower because I didn't know if the trend had changed or, or not. This way, I know the trend did change to go bullish. And when it's coming down, is not that it's going to come down to collapse. It's coming down to back test the bucket. So that is the, the, the aha moment for me when I started to go through the process of the swing arm. Well, how effective is the swing arm? I heard a couple of people asking, okay, uh, can you tell me what the probabilities are? And the fact is that if you look at uh, this image, for example, you will get an idea of how effective visually and how effective this, this, this uh, tool is in guiding you through the process uh, once it triggers. So if I go in this example, I only have the swing arm. That's, I don't want to include anything else, just the swing arm. So it doesn't complicate your understanding. You can trade the swing, the swing arm alone and be successful if you understand how to use it. But it's not that hard. Green, you buy. Red, you sell. Now, at what point do you buy? You don't want to chase the price action. You want price action to come to you. So if the swing arm breaks, like in this case it did, your goal is to allow price to come into the bucket zone. And from then on, you want to start scaling into a position. In this example, price only came to backtest the breaking point of price, which is exactly, exactly what happened. It just came down to it. But the upward pressure was significant that it did not go into the zones. So how do I trade this? I personally would start with putting waiting orders to buy at the breaking point, at the first white line, second white line, third white line, even fourth white line, uh, green line. So you start to scale into a position as price comes to you. And as price then responds back up, you get to ride that until that swing arm breaks in your, against your position. Okay? So we'll go over some of those details uh, when we get to think or swim. Now, this is an example of going, of selling the ES, okay? The swing arm breaks initially. That happened like at 7.30 in the morning or 7.50 in the morning. Then price starts to go to back test the swing arm. Nine times out of 10, it happens. Now, this time of day is a slower time of day and then price is, is easier to go back test because it's not in a hurry to move. So it goes to each of the zones and you're able to scale into the position. You can, you can put one order. In this case, you, you know this is a slow time of day. You let price come to you. You put your stop, you, you, you waiting orders at each of the lines and the stops go behind the high of the swing arm. So you already know exactly what you need to do. You put the waiting orders at each level for whatever quantity you're looking at, one contract, one contract, one contract, or 10 or 100, whatever it is. And all the stops go behind the high of the swing arm. So you're no longer trying to guess, where do I put my stop? As price starts to move in the expected direction, highlighted by the swing arm, not because I read the newspaper, not because I read a report, not because somebody told me so, the swing arm is actually measuring live action in the market and telling you where price is going. Now, if you enter the positions, as I stated, from each of the individual lines in the first attempt to test, and then price drops for, I don't know, whatever, uh, 10, 15 points, and then find some support and then starts to go back test again, back again to the lines. The first positions that you sold and, and now prices drop, for example, 20 points or $20 on ES, you would move your stops to break even plus or break even, let's say, you know, break even at one cent or, or 25 cents to, to cover your commission fees and whatever else. So 
as price comes back again to the next step to, to back this, you get to do that all over again. Let me scale in whatever quantity of contracts per, 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 uh, per zone. Now these zones, I call them zones two, three, and four. The higher the zone, the better the entry and the smaller the stop, okay? Now, because of the time of day, this is about nine o'clock in the morning, price starts to move faster. So it did not go into all the zones. It actually just stayed on the first zone and turned over or the second, or zone number two. Uh, original design it with, four, with zones one, two, and three, and four. But I said, I don't want the 50% retracement zone. I want from 66 up. And that's, I want price to really work to come to me, for me to enter into a trade. Uh, so that's why I ended up with two, three, and four. So as price continues to go down, now I'm able to bring all my stops for the first set of contracts, the second set of contracts into break even plus. So I now have zero risk, zero stress in an hour time. I scaled up into the position with multiple contracts and they have no, no risk at all. So as price drops and it drops significantly all the way to 10 o'clock, here, what happens at 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock is the end of the prior day's clearing and it causes a bounce back or, a, or in the case of a downtrending process, if it's uptrending, it, it, will, it, it will do it the other way. So, so it, you, I'm always paying attention to the 10 o'clock time because it's an end of a cycle and it starts at a bounce in the opposite direction usually. What does it do? It goes back again into the selling zone. So the swing arm, what can you do as well? It's scaling one, two, three in each of the lines. All prior contracts are well into profit. So the new set of contracts have no risk either because they are now protected by prior profits. As the market turns over and continues in the direction of the swing arm until it reaches the target, you're riding with all those set of contracts on the way down, okay? The reason price stopped where it did is because it reached Ben's tool, the average price movement indicator for the daily chart. What did it do? It caused price to bounce hard and break the swing arm to the upside. So what's the mechanics of the swing arm? We already know that when it breaks, nine times out of 10 price comes back into the bucket to back test the newly created swing arm. And what did they do? It, exactly that. So you start scaling into position as discussed before, as price comes into the bucket, as it goes through into each of the zones, you have waiting orders at each of those zones and you're scaling back a long position and taking it from there. So I hope that's clear, it's not confusing. Uh, it's something that can be certainly implemented by just looking at the swing arm, okay? Uh, now, what I like to do is to go to Thinkorswim and just take a look at a, a couple of charts. After we do that, uh, Ali uh, Katami is going to help us understand how the swing arm works in conjunction with volume profile. He's, my understanding is, 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 is that probably in the group is probably the, the guy that has the most experience in utilizing uh, volume profile. I personally do not know. I've, I've used it in the past trying to get a sense and I had seen a relationship between volume profile and the swing arm. But without the understanding that Ali has, I didn't connect the two to the degree that he's seen it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and then I'm going to go to think or swim and walk you through the process of my day and how I start to analyze my uh, trading process. So I start with my summary of charts. And uh, let me just reset this because now that I changed monitors from one to the other, it kind of got out of whack. Let's see. So, uh, okay, so this is that. And now let's look at the next one. Uh, 
it says my screen sharing has paused. Are you guys seeing my screen? You guys there? Ben? Yes, so we only see your uh, Google PowerPoint at the moment. Okay, so let me go. So I have to go to a new share. Okay, I'm, let me let me get to that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So, now. okay, thank you. So, so now, now right to go, ahead. go ahead. So somebody asked earlier, does the swing arm work in both high volume and low volume U.S. market or after hour time? Yes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week or okay. six. Okay. Okay. So after your pre presentation, there will be a quick uh, Q&A, you answer the questions, and then we'll move on to Ali's uh, presentation, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh, if anyone have questions during um, Jose's session, just enter it into the chat and then once Jose finish, he'll, he'll take a look at it. Awesome. Okay, so so I start, the first thing when I come to my computer is to look exactly at what you're looking at. Okay, I, I get a bearings for where things are. Now, keep in mind that I'm only looking at just two instruments at this point in time. I do like to include in here uh, the dynamic pivots and the uh, auto trend lines. Uh, in so that I can get also a sense of longer term direction as, as, as uh, support and resistances that may be happening in an angular way versus just horizontal as the swing arm is and tool, Ben's tool, which is uh, a horizontal leader support or resistance. Since we also have trend lines going in the direction of the trend, so we could have, I need to be checking as well that I don't have a diagonal trend line that I'm not paying attention to. So I add those to the system as well. But for, the, for this instruction purpose, I just cleared up all the charts to just show you just two tools, the two primary tools, Ben's tool and the swing arm. So as you can see from practically every, I mean, all time frames are green, all time frames are bullish. And I did expect this to occur because to, to, for price to bounce as we discussed multiple times on Friday, because we had a situation in which uh, they, 30 minutes and one hour were, were cycling. And uh, the 30 minutes cycled once more than the one hour. And then uh, the other ones continue to stay bullish. So keep in mind that this is a, a set of waves. If you can visualize the waves uh, of anything, a, a le electricity or music or any type of waves, any sound wave, the higher the frequency, the faster the wave, in this case, in price, the, the lower the time frame, the faster it moves. Uh, so it moves more more cycles within a one hour. The, for example, the, the 10 minutes or the two minutes or the five minutes will cycle multiple times within the 30 minutes. So so they're, they, they, all, they're ne they are nested within each other. That's the, 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 the one thing you need to keep in mind, that you need to be aware that the lower time frames may be cycling and you think that it's going down, but now they're just going down to backtest support. And what is the back, where is the support they're backtesting to? Well, they're going to the swing arm. Price forgets, it has a memory, but it's like me. It forgets where you left the keys, where you left the wallet, and I have to constantly go back around the house looking for the stuff. Price does the same thing. It, it has direction, it has a view where it's gonna go, but it constantly has to come back to check. And where does it go to check? It goes back again to the swing arms. And if it breaks one swing arm, well, then it's going to go check on the next one. So for example, the, third, the 10 minutes broke down. So what did it go to check? It went to check the 30 minutes. Well, eventually the 30 minutes broke down. Where did the 30 minutes go check? Well, they it went to the one hour. In that case, the one hour held and caused the bounce at the end of the closing on Friday. Okay, did we know that. We talked about it multiple times during the day on Friday that there was a significant chance that price was going to bounce at the end of day, but I would not trade it because I do not leave positions open over the weekend. The risk is too significant for stuff to happen. I don't want to open up my account on Sunday night and find a significant gap. Could it go a gap up potentially? Could it go down? Yes, as well. Do I want to open up my account with a significant gap down if I'm long? Not really. I wouldn't do that. 
I do, and I personally do not recommend any one of you to do it. So that's where we are at. So now once I've done this quick review, I open up the uh, first chart and maximize it. Okay. And then I start to navigate the chart. Start to navigate the chart to get a sense of what, where the levels are and where they are uh, moving. You know, I need it. I'm sorry, I had an interruption here. Uh, so here we are. Uh, I start to navigate, and I'm, right now I'm just going to go quickly through it to for you to get your bearings of what I'm looking at now that I have an enlarged screen. I have the view of the swing arm, and then I have resistance on the top, support on the bottom. And this is two different days, the day prior and the next day. And you can easily see, I just see this as a box, a rectangular box, or a pool table I talk about, where price just goes, hits one edge, and it bounces opposite to the other edge, and it bounces back to the other edge. It's constantly doing that stuck between ranges. That's what price does. And your goal as the trader is to identify which box is price moving from and heading to. So let's go forward now to the one hour chart and see how that looks. In this case, like I said before, it's only two indicators. I don't have the trend lines and in this instance, but on the next session we do, we'll start adding more tools to it and then give you a better understanding as to how those trend lines help you make decisions as well. Right now, just, just only focus on the swing arm. Now, many people will ask me, okay, well, where, which, which time frame do I use? Every swing arm in every time frame provides opportunity because every one of them have the buying or selling zones. So your strategy is to buy the zones or sell the zones, whichever, if it's going up or it's going down, whatever time frame you pick, that's what you're gonna do as the option. Now, in this case, of course, the larger the time frame, the larger the required stop. So if you have a small little bitty account and you want to trade the one hour chart, well, you may be tested. Uh, and uh, if, if you start to scale in from 3025, then 3015, then 3008, then 3001, uh, and you sc you're scaling in on a small account, well, you're, you know, as price tests the bottom of the swing arm, which actually went all the way to the prior step of the swing arm and bounced. You will probably be getting pretty nervous if you have multiple contracts on the way down, on the way to you, and you probably think, oh my God, I'm going to lose my pants on this one. But it's, that's the way price behaves. It's constantly testing the levels that uh, is measured before as being either resistance or support, and price will do that on a regular basis. Once it bounces back up, then you're relieved from all that stress if you, if, if you place the wrong quantity of contracts on one trade and you're being worried about. I highly suggest you not do that because just as easy as this happens, it could potentially break or give you a test like it happened the prior day that it went way lower all the way to the daily, touch the daily and run. So make sure you get an understanding of, how, of this before you start scaling in into a, a larger number of sets on higher time frames. So if you were to be placing the trades as stated on each of these lines on the way down, uh, your stops need to be behind where? The low of the swing arm. So they need to be roughly around 29.72. And as prices starts to go uptrending, then you start to adjust your, your stop. But that in this case, we're already at a higher level. So that's, we're already at a significant resistance level. And that is something to be watch, careful of. How do I know it's resistance? Well, Ben's tool tell us that. On the two hour chart, I have the weekly resistance. The prior chart has the daily resistance. So if I go forward one to one next chart, here, the, week, the, the weekly resistance, what I like about this indicator is that it is not a line. For example, I used to use prior to this tool, the Camarilla levels, but I always knew there was a range of motion for price, but I had no way to measure it. This tool does it. It gives you extreme accuracy, telling you more or less where price will range from uh, and to. 
So there it is, the weekly resistance. Price comes down from the two hour. Where does it go? It goes to zone two and three and bounces. Look at before on Wednesday, what happens to price? Hits the resistance, comes back again to zone two, three and four and bounces. So this is extremely powerful. Look back in time. Price is trying to go to the resistance and attempting to it and failing. What does it do? Goes back again to the zone and bounces back to resistance and over and over and over it happens. So every time you have the opportunity to continue to scale in or short on the top and take profits and go in the opposite direction. And to trade that, you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to pay attention to what the higher, higher time frames are doing, which is the reason why one of my monitors is dedicated to have my six grid chart open at all times so that I can at a glance get an idea of what price is doing and then be aware that the turn that price is taking is going to face significant support or resistance because the swing arm is waiting for him. Okay, so let's go forward to the four hour chart. And the four hour chart, let me just reduce this a little bit. Now in this one, I have the monthly levels. So now in the prior chart, we knew we had the weekly. Now the weekly and the monthly are together. So we have a double whammy here telling us this is going to be a tough place to break. Can it break it? Of course it can, but it's going to need a significant catalyst from the outside to push this for upwards uh, without heading back down to back test somewhere to find some buyers to then come back and bring this back up. Uh, it may take multiple times, just like it happened over here with the weekly. It took three times and then on the fourth time it broke. I keep uh, saying in the, in the sessions that we have that prices, price behavior uh, in the markets requires uh, multiple touches to either a trend line or a support or resistance to break. And that is a lesson that I learned from Barack uh, in trade, at training channels. You know, he tells me, as a price will hit the level three times and it's usually the fourth time that it breaks. So be paying attention. It doesn't matter if it's horizontal. It doesn't matter if it's in, in, in an angle of a train line heading in one direction or the other. So they always pay attention to the cycles of one, two, three, and then four is the break. Sometimes the four, it doesn't break, but the fifth one will. So uh, keeping that in mind, right now we have one attempt. Now we have the second attempt. So we'll have to see how this plays itself out over time. Uh, okay, so let me go forward now to the eight hour chart and see what this one looks like. And you start to get a sense of uh, the fact that it's, it's struggled to go up. You know, we had a high here, then we had a low, then we had a higher high, then we had a slightly lower low, lower high. Back tested the swing are and bounced. We had this clearly on a 10 minute chart this entry and it was an awesome entry. Okay, uh, let me go now to the daily chart and let's take a look at the daily chart. So this provides an amazing amount of clarity, uh, especially for those swing traders uh, that are looking for an opportunity to trade long term. So swing arms themselves provide an opportunity to, to, to consider positions that last for either weeks or months. I keep getting messages on this thing that I have no idea where they're coming from. Anyway, uh, so this thing back, had you closed or shorted, I believe Ali did, but as a matter of fact, at the top of the market and rode it all the way down. What an amazing, an amazing trade. What an amazing trade. And guess what? This is gonna happen again. Uh, when will it happen? I don't know. I don't have a clue when that will happen but I'm prepared and I have my alerts set up when the four hour, eight hour or the daily break to the downside. And I'll be getting a notification, email and text. This thing is going to hell. And you guys need, you not, you guys have exactly the tools to do exactly the same thing. So that's that as it, as it turns out, what, uh, that, that's my part of the discussion on the swing arms. I hope that was clear. 
And what I'd like to do now is open the floor for questions. Now, let me see if I can find where do you the... look at the chat on Zoom? There. Yeah, let, let me go see where that is. Uh, it be right next to where you share your screen. Not right next to where I share my screen. On Zoom. So pull up Zoom. Chat, there it is. Okay. All right, so let me bring this up over here. Oh, so the questions are there. Okay, let me scroll down through it and see. So the, the that question from PK about uh, US or mar after market hours and all that. Uh, the, the swing arms work in every time frame, just like we discussed earlier. The difference is that you must understand that there is a significant difference between sessions, okay? Uh, a few years back, before the administration we have today, you could easily see the narrow range of price for Asia sessions. It would be very tight. Then Europe would come in and it would double, triple, quadruple in size and volume and momentum. And then the US comes in is many times over. Now, recently, for the past maybe 12 months, I've, no, I've noticed that the Asia session has moved just as much as uh, something I had never seen. It, it has trended extremely well. Uh, and as a general rule, providing some great opportunities to trade practically 24 hours a day. The only time where I found that is really uh, extremely unreliable, especially if, you, if you're trying to, to have small swing trades. I, scalps, I do not recommend. Scalping $1 here, 50 cents here, I think it's a complete waste of your time and a complete waste of your uh, intelligence and capital in, of your investment in time and effort to learn. You must really focus on swing trades in the day where you allow price to move 30, 40, 50, 70 bucks on ES uh, versus just trying to get $1 here, $1 there, okay? The swing arms give you the structure to accomplish accomplish just that. So just make sure that you give yourself the opportunity. You have it in front of you. Do not cheat yourself by just focusing on the penny and not on the dollar. Okay. Okay. So let's go see what else. Um, explained about zone one, two, and three, and four. Where to put the stop loss? Can you explain the convergence? Can the swing arm work for stocks? The swing arm works on everything. It could be Forex, it could be uh, futures or stocks. The difference is that stocks do not trade 24 hours a day. So you'll have gaps, gap ups and downs. So it's important that if you're going to do overnight trading with stocks that you're using high time frames, four hour, eight hour, you know, daily charts, not try to do multi-day trades with a 10 minute chart. Uh, unless the 10 minute chart is cycling within an eight hour on its bottom in and giving you a signal. It has to have the support of a buying zone of a higher time frame if you're going to use a lower time frame to enter. If you understand the, what, what I'm talking about, I talk about the lower time frames will cycle within the higher time frames. So if price comes down all the way to the zones of uh, either the eight hour uh, or you know, even, the, even the four hour, the 10 minutes comes down, cycles down all the way to zone four of the four hour, and it goes bullish, that's a fantastic entry. Uh, if you're able to get the four hour to cycle within the daily zone four, you have a super entry. Uh, so yes, it can be used on all of them. It's just that you need to understand that each instrument you trade dances at a different pace. Okay, meaning that there some are more volatile than others, some are more, more stable than others. So those of us that are Hispanic that like to uh, dance salsa, the rhythm is dramatically different than if you dance into some Frank Sinatra song. And that's exactly what happens to instruments from futures or natural gas or gold, or they all have a different pace. So you must have the experience to understand how does price behave and is this swing arm reflecting uh, this that zones properly. If for whatever reason it's not occurring, it may need some adjusting for the instrument you're looking for. 
okay? Uh, let's say. The, 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 the question about the zones, uh, let me uh, go to, let me go back to a 10 minute chart. And um, let's go to the 10 minute chart. And let me ensure that I'm sharing this properly. Where is my share screen? Share here. Okay, let me know if you see it. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so this is the two minute chart. So I have side by side the two minutes chart and and the 10 minute chart. So I'm gonna to scroll to the left on the 10 minute chart. And uh, let me just move this bar out of here. So the 10 minute chart is my base chart for day trading, okay? Once I have my, my chart uh, up, I'm focusing on where the resistances are. And in this case, you can easily see them where they are. As price has was coming from the support of the daily, the next target as it broke the daily resistance is to now dance between the top and the bottom of the next day. Well, the swing arm continued to be bullish overnight. And then what did it do? It came to zone two, three, and four, allowing you to scale into those positions, bounce back up, uh, if you had all the all the tools turned on, you would notice that there was a, a pivot point or resistance point up uh, up top, allowing you to either take profits if you're you know if you're working the Asia session for example, uh, I take profits and then allow it to come back into the zones, buy it again and do it over and over. Now the closer you get to the you know 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, the more uh, lack of definition you you find in price now once the us you know european session comes in this case we were just going sideways and there was consolidation going on and really no direction because we had already moved so much from where we had come so that's you that's what you have to understand that price does get tired it does need to rest and it does need to wait for a new set of buyers and sellers so every session has a different set of buyers and sellers Asia has one set, Europe has another set, and the US has another set, and none of them trust each other. Every one of them wants to go back and back test what the other ones have looked at and considered as support. The US comes in, I don't trust any one of them, let me go back and check. Okay, that's the way I see it. Now, as US starts, US goes and tests the 10 minute and says, yes, this is support, we're going up to the next target. What does it do? It reaches the target, it touches the target, and it drops from there. In that drop, it broke the swing arm. So what happens when the swing arm breaks? Price starts to go back to the zones to test them. Now, if it was support before, well, I want to make sure that that becomes resistance. And as time passes, price gets stuck between that resistance and support. And as time continues to pass, the swing arm continues to go lower and lower. What happens? This increases the pressure. I'm stuck against the wall on one side I, and I have a, a, a collapsing wall on the other side, put him into a corner. And somehow I'm gonna to have to react out of this. What did price do as the pressure increased? It exploded up, okay? And that's what happened at the end of the day. Now, if I go back, and take a look at this same scenario on a five minute chart, you can see what happened. Let's go to the five minute chart. Let me enlarge this and see what occurred here. So we talk about the sizes of the waves. So the five minute wave is a smaller wave than the 10 minute wave. So if the 10 minute wave, wave broke, the five minute wave must have broken prior, okay? So if, if you concentrate on looking at this swing arm, we're stuck in this resist resistance and support and it gets just tighter and tighter and tighter. It attempts to touch on the bottom and it just bounces right back up to the zones. And then the swing, swing arm gets even tighter. So the squeeze is more and more. 
then it fin finally ruptures to the to, 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 to the upward section and breaks the swing arm. What does it do? It goes back into every one of the five minute zones, touches every one of them in the five minute candle and runs in the opposite direction. So if you have to scan on the ATR, uh, the swing arm breaking on the five minutes, you will be notified by text and email. Hey, this thing broke. You have a buy opportunity, place your orders and go for it. You place your orders in, and you have, you know, depending on the account size and your, your comfort level, you can put orders as price comes down into the bucket. Ideally, I want price to come at least to zone one, excuse me, to the line, the first white line, uh, then the second line, then the third line, then the fourth line. You put positions in every one of them, especially when you have such a dramatic squeeze. Okay. And your stop needs to be behind the prior lower low. Okay. As this bounces as it did, you bring your stops, you break even, and you have zero stress. Now, the fact that this is happening on a Friday end of day is a different story. Uh, you already heard my story of what, about my position or my belief on the weekend position. I never place a, a trade on, on a weekend position. But this certainly gave the opportunity, if it had been on, on a regular day, to buy it from a significant squeeze, knowing that the pressure is massive and it was going to react to it strongly. All right, so let me go back to what else we have here. So are they zones based on fib retracements? Yes, they are. This tool is a combination of the ATR trading stop and incorporating fib retracements into it. So if you want to, for example, see it, I'm gonna right click, edit study, and here you see the zone, the, the, the fibs that I'm interested in, 61.8, 78.6, and 88.6. I took out the 50%. I, as I said before, I had four zones, but I want price to work to, to get me to get uh, involved in the trade. I want price to come to me. So I took it off, and it's only this uh, three zones, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, could we go over the swing arm study settings? Okay, let's go back again. The swing arm study settings, to me, the look and feel is important. So uh, I add in here, for example, the trailing stop is a large uh, five width, which gives you the thickness of the last line because it just tells me that is the primary trend of direction, that, 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 that is the, the zone four, which I want to focus on. If price gets to that zone, I'm either buying it or selling it. I might stop behind the low or high of the swing arm. No questions asked, that's it. Okay, the next one is the, this one right here that I do not use at all. I do not like it because what it does is add a line to the opposite side of the swing arm some people may like that, I don't. It, I find it that it causes me confusion. So I do not use it, I turn that off, okay? And then from then on, it just go to, goes to fit one, two, three, and they're all uh, size either one for the first line, then two for the second, excuse me, one is the third one, is, this, is, is a, a slightly larger because to me, those are the most important zones, three and four. Those are where I'm going to have the most energy to push price in the opposite direction, okay? Now, if I go forward, I have the ability to put arrows in here to uh, tell me that, and let me turn them on so you can see, but I don't want them. I, I have that done just in case some people want wants them, but I, I don't want it. I'll show you what that looks like. So it starts to tell you, hey, we're crossing this line, we're crossing the next line, you know, the fib one, two, or three. And that's what that is. Okay, and it's telling you, hey, this is an opportunity to short. I already know that, so I don't need the flags. And the fact that when you're against you know, support and resistance, they start to appear in both sides. So since I have been stool, I already know where support is. I don't need all the flags to tell me. I know price is gonna come to it. 
So it's a, it's, it's a matter of preference and, and it's up to you if, if that's what you like to have or not. So you, you, you have the opportunity to do so from there, okay? To turn them on or off as you like. Uh, the next item is the alerts on the bottom. And the alerts allow you to then turn on or off the sound alert when price reaches the zone. You can do that, you can enable or disable. Uh, so that's, that's, that's your preference. And you can do for the bullish and also the bearish. Uh, now you have the option as well to have the alert and the message appear in your message center with the specific sound you want. In this case, you have to use the sounds that come with EncroSwim. And when the, it triggers, when price comes to that specific zone, this message will show up in your message center of EncroSwim. So you can see a summary of the alerts that are occurring. Also, I don't use them. I, I, I don't like too many sounds uh, because I already have my alerts specifically for the breakdown of the swing arm or break of the swing arm. And they, I also have the oversold, overbought alerts from uh, from Ben as well on from his trend momentum indicator, and uh, and then I have scans as well. So I don't have I don't need this specific alerts, but I put them in there just in case. Um, okay, so that's the settings uh, detail. All right, so let's see. Can you explain the bubbles? highs and lows on that time frame. I wonder which, bu which bubbles. I wonder if he's talking about, or I don't know who it is, about the, the daily resistance and daily support bubbles, I wonder. Yeah, most of those bubbles. Yeah, so initially when I got to the group, uh, I my, my intent is always to teach. <laughs> I enjoy it and I think the, the, it goes with my purpose. My purpose is, is to, to pass my knowledge forward uh, as a way to give back. So I'm always starting to look and see how, if I were to find a person that's fairly new at this, how could I guide them? And uh, yes, the tool gives me that information, but the newer person will be getting confused with all this stuff. So I figured that adding the labels or the bubbles would will, would help, and, and it, they help me significantly, really, because I can go from chart to chart, and in one second I can see daily resistance, weekly resistance, monthly resistance, and if I see daily, weekly, and monthly resistance at the same level, well, we have a triple resistance that's going to hold price from moving either high or lower, if it is either support or, or, or resistance like it was this past week. Uh, so it is it, a huge, huge, huge. Uh, guide to you, the trader, to know we're on the way to a wall and that wall is just massive. So I'm going to be looking and be prepared to short against that wall. Uh, so that's the idea of those labels. Okay. Next, uh, today's class was simple and clear. Okay. Have a question. Do we have the AMMM uh, tool? Do you have to use this? Uh, the, 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 the tool the, from Ben, uh, the AMMM, -M, if I can pronounce it right, uh, I added it to my grid on a couple of charts, mostly higher time frame charts. And then I'm also taking a look at the lower time frame charts to see. And, uh, and from the day trading perspective, they're pretty powerful because if you, you enter with the swing arm, they other tool gives you the opportunity to take profits and allow them price to backtest the swing arm, re-enter with the swing arm, and then go again in the direction of the trend. And then the, the, the Ben's tool then tells you again, hey, okay, we've hit resistance again. We're going to go back down and back check the support. So it allows you the opportunity to do that. So I think it's, it's something that's worthwhile uh, taking a look at. Uh, I'm sure in, 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 in all the sessions, we start to look at each of the components that the individuals here have uh, developed and see how they integrate with what we have in front of us right now. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. We imported, imported TOS chart settings from Discord. However, the clouds and zooms uh, do not work. Uh, 
So it probably, the most likely is that the import has been done incorrectly or you're trying to do scans when it is a chart study or you're using the, the code in the wrong location, it's, it's, which is easily resolved. All you need to do is just raise your hand and uh, somebody will walk you through it, either myself or anybody else in the group. Uh, no problem. Uh, so have you found that uh, a complement for taking profits, though there would be quicker settings or alternative uh, to scale out of profits? Well, we, we can we can go over over that uh, idea. I guess we could do that right now. What the hell? Uh, the question is, you know, how do you uh, you know handle your profit management? And uh, if we go back, if I go back to my thought process of of the teachings that I had from Marty Schwartz, Marty Schwartz is is a, a, an aggressive profit taker. Uh, he's not the kind of guy that would place a trade and hope this thing goes to the heaven. Uh, and, and then when it gets to heaven, I'm going to take profits. No, he's aggressively, uh, he enters a massive order and then he, he uh, takes profits, profits massively as well. Just this, he's not, uh, he's, what his view is, if the market gives me the opportunity, I'm going to cash it in. So, uh, if going back to Ben Stool, if Ben Stool, if, if that's the way you look, you're looking to trade, Ben Stool would certainly help you accomplish that. Take the profits and, and rescaling. That's one thought. What is another thought? You may just develop a system, like for example, in this case, I have built in a an order. Let, let me just start with the first one. I'm going to go to an order that I have saved, in which is for one contract minimum. I can scale, you know, change the quantities, but it, by default is one contract with a 1% stop. By default, I have it already saved with a negative 1% or and just make sure it is 1%. It's not dollars, it's 1%, the stop, and 3% for profit taking. Then I have the uh, timing in force is good to cancel. And then once I do this, then I click on the little disk that shows up when you create this and you, I save it and I saved it under this name, 1-1% stop. So when I want to place the trade, I click on sell. And, uh, in, and if I'm selling at market, the, the order right away gets processed. And then I have the stop on the top if I'm shorting and the take profit on the bottom. Once the orders are on the screen, and if the stop 1% was way up there, way beyond my resistance level, I'll pull it, I'll hold it with the mouse and bring it down to behind the uh, resistance level. Now, as price starts to then go down, uh, as I expect it to go based on what the tools are doing, then I bring my stop to break even plus. So let's go back and see the example. Right here, I'm looking at it five minute chart. So let's go back and look at the two minute chart and go back to exactly the same location. Let me just hide this so I can see where I'm going. So this just as an example, let's say that this, this, this broke down uh, I sell it, my, my, my resistance is on top, I sell it. And as prices starts to play, you know, go in the direction on the way to support, my stop is behind the high. And as this is occurring, I'm bringing my stop manually to the downside. Okay, so the, the, the process, what it does is number one, neutralize your, your risk. And number two, if as this continues down, you're then bringing your stop using the, the swing arm as a guidance, but I don't bring the stop to the swing arm itself. I go to one step back. So I'm always staying behind giving price the room, for example, look at here to stay behind. Of course, as you come to support, you should have already taken all profits at support. You already know this is going into a squeeze and if you're short, you should have done that. 
uh, then that's assuming one contract. So let's go to the three contracts or multiple contracts set up. So I have a template for three brackets, all with a 1% stop, and then different take profits. So when the order gets submitted, let's say I had, uh, for example, buy order down here and I buy whatever, let's say 10 contracts. So it automatically breaks that down into three contracts, three contracts, and four contracts. And the stops, of course, are all spread out on the bottom at 1%. So I bring all those stops to below the prior low. Okay. All of them, all 10 contracts. And then my take profits are spread out upwards by 1%, 2%, and 3%. Now, if I know this is the wall of resistance I'm going to, well, I'm going to take and move my take profits into this zone. So as price is going up, I'm taking profits on the way. Um, and depending on your level of conviction, you may just, since this is a two minute with significant power moving upwards, I'll just bring my, my stops higher up here to protect the existing profits and then allow time for this to reach the target before I completely close the trace on the top. Now, how do you manage the trade is up to you. I'll just give you that kind of guidance and, and for you to have an idea. Uh, but uh, the name of this game is to cash in and take the money when the market gives it to you. Now, if you are too nervous and too stressed by the price action, you quite likely enter poorly, you enter late, you over uh, uh, bought according to your size of account, uh, all those things that all those rules that you break will cause significant stress. And it will cause you to then, uh, for example, chase the trade because you, you, you were reluctant to enter when the system was allowing you to enter properly at the zones. Then you decide, wow, this is running. I'm going to mess out on this whole thing. I'm going to buy right here after he's already moved 30 points. And then of course, the minute you enter, it comes back to back test the zones. Then you get upset, then you close the position, you lost some money, and then it goes in the direction you thought it was going to go. Because you know, where, whatever the swing arm is telling you is going. Okay, so, so having clarity of mind, peace of mind, be completely disconnected from the money part. Uh, you have to be balanced. You have to be relaxed. You have to be at peace. If you sense that you're changing for whatever reason, something's wrong. And either you don't know what you're doing or you don't trust or you have confidence in the plan you're implementing. So that's how I would enter multiple orders and how I would manage the profits on the way to, from uh, entry to target. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, can I do a scan tab? Uh, one of the members, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ace Cadet, <laughs> he, uh, he just posted if, uh, a video on how to do the scan and he did an awesome job. Uh, yes, that is so, correct. So oh. he sent me the, the scanner, the video, and I just posted it on our Use Think Script channel. So if anyone needs help with setting up the scanner for the swing arm, you can always check that video out and he'll, he'll, he'll show you how to do it. Yes, yes, and I really appreciate you doing that. Um, then as I look down, let's see, uh, let's see, uh, am I using regular candles? No, I do not. I use Hakanashi candles. Uh, I do, when I have my sixth grid, I will use regular trend candles on the 30 minute chart to see a, a, a clarity on what's happening to the candle itself. But, uh, nine times out of 10, I use, uh, Hakanashi candles only. So that's pretty much all the questions. Uh, so that's that. So now there, there are a couple of announcements that I want to make and it has to do with significant steps forward for what we're looking. We have some amazing, amazing people in this group. I'm just like freaking blown away about the brain power and talent of these people and their interest in Call, you know, coming forward and helping everybody out with their knowledge and, and, and it's, it's just mind blowing. Uh, so one of the, the, the pieces of information uh, will come from Ali. He, he will discuss how the swing arms work 
and how in relationship with volume profile, which I understand is his primary tool. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to benefit from his experience and he'll guide us through that process. But before we get to that, I want to highlight a couple things that okay. come, um, excuse okay. me. Sorry to, to uh, disturb. Um, just got words from uh, Ali that he's going to be rescheduling his session for a later date. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, so personal reason. So uh, today is just going to be you and that's it. Okay. So, so what I'll do, I'll give you a quick overview of what that looks like. Okay. Uh, and then he'll give us his, his presentation later. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. In the meantime, I like to move to mobile. Uh, we have one of our members, Amit, uh, he's in Sarasota, Florida, uh, that uh, actually built the swing arm for mobile. Uh, and uh, he actually incorporated the swing arm as well as Ben's daily support resistance and zones to be used on a mobile. Uh, so let me see if I can pull that image up and sh show it to you guys. Uh, give me one second. Mm. So let me reshare the screen. Okay, do you see that screen? Yes. Okay, so this is now a screenshot of the iPhone application with the swing arm. Uh, this is all pre preliminary, and there, there's going to be some some more uh, just adjusting adjusting of, of the thickness of the lines but cosmetic stuff but uh, th this is what we were discussing last night until 11 o'clock last night uh, when I first saw this on my phone I had goosebumps all over my arms uh, I thought this was incredible to 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 use because I was told many times over that it couldn't be done uh, so this is to me is super awesome especially for, especially for some of you that do have a full-time job and uh, will have more of a limited time to be able to trade and you may depend on trading at night or this or the other but if you have an awesome mobile tool uh, you have more opportunity to potentially trade positions now Amit is an expert on mobile uh, intelligence so he's working on multiple ideas including the ability to have the orders come in, you know, be placed. And as the swing arm is trending, it uses the swing arm zone four as the benchmark to bring the trailing stop automatically to it. Okay. Once price reaches the target zone, in this case, the daily, it would close the trade automatically. And as price turns in the opposite direction, the swing arm breaks from resistance you would get an alert that you have an opportunity to short as well. And if you do short it, then the stops will be according to the guidelines provided and it will trail the move to the downside. Uh, so that is, is some really, really incredible stuff that would potentially be coming forward to us in the near future. So it will work on the iPad or it will work on the laptop. You know, well, the, the laptop is just a regular computer, but yeah, it will work on the iPad as well. Uh, on your phone and an iPad. Uh, so it will be awesome for those of you that do have to go to work uh, and you get an alert on a setup that is of importance to you, then you're able to trade it. Now, currently the mobile doesn't have the ability to have bracketed orders. Well, Amit is an expert in doing that. So he's gonna have complex order opportunities to allow you to be able to have uh, various mixes of orders to to allow you to to enter the trade and automatically already have your stops built in and your uh, take profits 
uh, if you want to spread them out or if you want to just let the target zone be the trigger to close the position. Okay, so that's that's the update on that. Uh, so now I'm going to go back and take a quick look at voice uh, at uh, volume profile. Okay, so let me see one second and uh, let me bring up uh, that screen. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, erase some of these drawing sets from here. Okay, so now we're looking at the swing arm, bend tools, and volume profile. Okay, those of you that are not familiar with volume profile, let me just compress this so you can take a look at this. I'm going to compress it all the way so you can get a sense of what's going on here. Um, as it turns out, uh, the, the, swing arm them, the swing arm has a, a significant relationship to the volume profile. And uh, it, uh, it usually when, when you see situations in which you have the buy zone of the, in this case, we're looking at a 10 minute chart, it went to Ben's tool all the way to the bottom it, it gives us the gives us the profile low, then we get the buy swing arm on a ten minute chart. I can go even to the one two minute chart and see the same thing, but um, for for this illustration, I'm going to use the ten minutes. So if you for whatever reason did not enter a target of the daily once the two one minute chart broke up, which you can certainly set up an alert to do that, and so or a dead two minute chart breaks up, so that you're able to have as early of an entry as possible and then you stop below the zone and then write it all the way up. Notice that the, the uh, volume profile is all green. Jose, I think you're showing the wrong screen. Uh, somebody mentioned that they don't see the volume profile. Oh, you're kidding me. Okay, give me one second. You're currently showing the sixth grid. Now. Okay, awesome, perfect. My apologies. No worries. No worries. <laughs> uh, okay, so so let me go back. Uh, so this is this. I'm compressing everything uh, so that we can go see all the way to Friday, and the volume profile here is showing us in color, in the greenish color or turquoise, uh, and then the swing arm is green all the way up as all this volume is happening. The swing arm is heading up until it reaches the point of control. Notice that now on the right hand side. You see the profile low. Up here, you see the point of control. Now on this day, now we have the value low, value high. This is because of the squeeze that they end up all stuck together. And then this skyrockets uh, at, at the end of the day. There's the one, there are a couple of issues we like to figure out. I, I would like to figure out, I'm sure he'll, he will, is that I like to displace the bubbles so they're not behind each other, if that's feasible. But to me, it's important, though, especially for the newer people, to see that if you do get to a, a an area, uh, a value area high, or uh, it, you know, which is an extreme in conjunction with the daily resistance, that is a significant opportunity to short. Yes, the the, the value the, the the profile will adjust, but. A, the fact that it reaches and it breaks the swing arm from those levels is a huge tell to me that I could short this and be okay with it and put my stuff behind the, the zone. Um, so I'm not going to go through detail on this because I do not, I'm not an expert on this. I'd rather have Ali uh, walk us through it. But what he did realize as he was analyzing the swing arms is how price behaves in relationship of, to the swing arm and the point of control or value high area zones as the squeezes are being created and how it responds to the zones of the uh, volume profile uh, with the massive volume bars showing us 
that price is being, you know, uh, uh, volume is, is positive and is changing from this red bar to the green bar and the price just skyrockets. So that's that as far as this goes. Um, let me look back and see what else is over here. Uh, what does it mean by the yellow bubbles, uh, the AMB? This, my understanding, I probably Ben would be better at that, uh, answering that question, but this has to do with Elliott waves. Uh, it's my understanding. And I haven't because it, it is a big tell to me that if this system like this recognizes the A as an Elliott wave turning point is of significance. And the same thing when we get to the opposite side in conjunction with all the tools, it's pretty powerful to me. Now there's also something else that uh, Ali uses and he'll also walk us through that. And it has to do, and some of you actually use this, is the sequence in the sequence counter. Uh, so that is something that I added because he, he showed it to me and I had never seen it before. Uh, some of you have expertise in it. So in, in sessions going forward, I'm sure we'll take one of these items at a time with some of the experts we have here and they'll walk us through this. Okay, and that's pretty much everything I have for you guys. Awesome. So um, thank, thank you, Jose, for the informative session. Your time, knowledge, and wisdom are greatly appreciated. You know, you took the time to help to show us your setup, your thought process again, and we're very thankful, thankful for that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, um, it, it's, 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 I was thinking about this late last night, just thinking how a week's time with aggressive action moving forward, how dramatic a difference one week can do to right. every, one of, every one of us. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of if you're working by yourself versus coming with you know, 280 people or as many as this group has, I don't know how many it is, but it's a whole bunch with incredible knowledge and brain power. And not only that, with the heart in the right place. We're not doing this for the money. We're doing this for the, 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 the value that it can bring not only to our families, but to those that we know. And, and the fact that we can spread this around the world, we can pass this knowledge uh, to anyone that wants to hear it and have a significant impact around the world. Mm -hmm. so, so it's as this stuff spreads, hey, come on over. You know, anybody's interested in learning, come on over. All you have to do is just go to the forum Mm -hmm. and follow everybody uh, mm -hmm. and get involved and, and start bringing forward the knowledge and start sharing and, 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 and we'll help each other accomplish great things. Right. So right. If, if that's all, I'll call it a day and uh, we'll be back in here uh, Monday morning. Awesome. By the way, if we miss, in case we miss anyone's questions, you can just use the Discord chat room and post your question again. We'll take a look and, and help you out. Awesome. 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 Thank you so much. Guys, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Awesome. Thank Have you. a good weekend, everyone. See you on right. next. Bye-bye.